Hi there. In this section, I'll show you how to get access to Azure DevOps. There are two options you have. Create an account for Azure DevOps Cloud Hosted Service or install your own Azure DevOps server in your on-premises environment. I'll cover both to make sure you have everything regardless what options you take to get access to Azure DevOps. Signing up with Azure DevOps Service is easiest way to get access to Azure DevOps. In this video, I'll show you how to sign up and sign in to Azure DevOps Service account. You will need Microsoft account. I'll show you how to create an organization and how to add users to your organization. Let's dive into the demo. To sign up with Azure DevOps Service, you go to the URL wheelstudio.microsoft.com forward slash VSO. Just hit that link. Or you can also search on any of your favorite search engine like google.com, like Azure DevOps. And you should be able to see the same um, website or portal to get access to Azure DevOps service. Okay, so whichever way you go, you just click on sign into Azure DevOps. I'm already signed in, so I should be presented to create a new Azure DevOps project. Uh, you might get a login screen to log in with your Microsoft account. And by the way, to log in with your Microsoft account, you can enter your email address, your phone number, Skype ID, um, I, I use my email address as a general lo login. If you have Amazon subscription, then use Microsoft account associated with your Amazon subscription because you get more features such as test plans, Azure artifacts, Azure pipelines, depending on your real studio subscription level. Anyway, so just give it a name, test project one. And you can choose if it need to be public project or private, just you can, or you can see, and you can just press continue. And voila, you have access to Azure DevOps. You have created fully functional Azure DevOps project. This is different way to creating a project because this for the first time. Generally, here's another way to create more projects. You go to project settings, And this is, you see the project settings for this project only. And you can see this hierarchy. If you wanna go to the root, you just click the icon, Azure DevOps, and you go on the root. You can see your project is listed. Your organization is listed on the left. And you can click your organizations if you, in case you have multiple. Uh, you can now see that button, create project. Just click that button. And you can see this is a little bit different the window we just saw previously to create our first project. And uh, unfortunately, this is very common in Microsoft way. Uh, when you create something first time, it's different. And when you create a second time, it's different, which is a bit confusing for me. But anyway, you give a project name like test project two. I'm just covering here to make sure you know both ways. Uh, again, uh, you select private or public, whichever where you want to see. But here you have one more option, advanced, right? Now you can select where you control. You want to use Git, which is the most famous when you control for distributed when you control option. Or you have centralized when you control option uh, as a DevOps when you control. Also known as TFVC, Team Foundation when you control. And the second option you have here in advanced section is your process template. Process template, define your, your process, your it impact, a lot of things, especially the work items we'll talk about later, the agile planning tools, which we will talk about later. But make sure you get it right first time, especially the process template, as you won't be able to change it later. But you can customize each template to suit your needs. More on this later. You have four templates to choose from. This will impact mainly your work item management process and reporting area. If you do Scrum, choose Scrum. Here is the Scrum, okay? 
if you do you know work in an agile pro other than scrum like kanban uh, then agile template is probably a better suit for you to your needs if you are just starting and want to keep things simple then microsoft has recently added an option for basic option this will simplify most of the terms and and you know remove the extra stuff cmmi is better fit for companies that are implementing cmmi processes or seeking cmmi certification uh, you know then they can use that it's probably a good fit but also for waterfall approach for whatever reason you are stick uh, still with the waterfall process you, you, you cmi is probably the better option for for you okay enough talk so we gonna select uh, scrum and we're gonna create our first project And we have our project created. Big collection of tooling waiting for your commands. But wait, you are kind of lonely here. You need to work with your team, right? So next step is to give access to other people to your Azure DevOps organization. To do that, you go to your project settings. Now, you go to your organization settings. So to get access to organization again, click on the root icon and then you select your organization and then you select your organization settings. Here you will see the users tab on the left. Click here. And you will see this little icon plus icon to add new users. So you click this button. And here you can enter the user email. Or if your organization have Office 365 as your Active Directory, then you can enter your Office 365 account. Otherwise, enter your personal email address. If your users don't have access to Microsoft account, ask them to create one. And you can add several email address by separating with a semicolon. So let me add couple of test accounts I created for this demo. So this is the one, then semicolon I can do if I want to. And one more account. All right. In access level, we can select basic. That is the required um, level, which is uh, to contribute to the code base, the version control. You can also select a stakeholder which is free licensing that gives users limited access, i.e. backlogs and boards and dashboards. I will recommend to add everybody outside development team to, uh, to stakeholder access. And if anyone need access to more features than a stakeholder can have, you can always change the access level to the suitable, uh, you know, basic or if they are MSTN, you can use the MSTN sub, uh, subscription option. Uh, by the way, if you have MSDN, you should always select Visual Studio subscriber because then it won't count the license. Um, five, first, five, first five license um, users are free. You get free uh, uh, and um, if you need more, then you can um, either select Visual Studio subscriber and this won't count the license. So you can have maybe hundreds or thousands of MSDN subscriber and uh, you will still have to add more basic users, five basic users, and you won't be charged a penny uh, if you do that. But if you, for some reason, you don't have a MSM subscriber and you have a reach of limit of five, you will have to select the basic. Uh, and sixth basic you are adding, it will charge you, and which is also very cheap. It's around six dollars uh, at the time of this recording, but you know, it keeps changing. Anyway. So to add to the project, you can select all, and this is optional by the way, so I'll leave it. 
So which which project you want to add these users? Um, if I select, so I I have to select this option by the way, that there are project readers, contributors, administrators. So it's read only access. It says uh, access to you know push the code into the repo or check in the code into the version control. Um, and if you're gonna give full access, you can also select project administrator. I'll select project contributor. And you can tick a box to send invite. Make sure you tick it. <laughs> Otherwise, they won't be able to, uh, you know, you need to let them know you have access so they can activate their account and just click add. As soon as you click the add, it will send the emails, and we will, which we'll see in next. And you can see you have added, but they have never accessed it. Okay. To access it, they need to access their account first and click the join now button and they will be in. And I just logged in with one of that user and you can see uh, I have the email. Uh, this is the email and I just have a button to join now. And as soon as I click it, I will be able to see these two projects we created and I can go to any project and voila, I have access. So I can access all of the DevOps features.